Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to be doing the second tram stop on our elevated tram line, right here near the marina area. The basis of the elevated tram system in Brick Nottingham is the monorail system from Lego, and the basis of the monorail or tram stops is this station piece which is quite a simple mechanism in that it controls the motion of the monorail or tram by turning this switch and essentially it just moves these elements either in the down position like that, in the medium position like that or in the up position like that and this basically causes the switch on the bottom of the motor element of the tram or monorail to switch off or change directions. So it would perhaps be going this way, hit this point, in which case the switch that was sticking out here would hit that buffer, go in and pop out the other side where it'd be allowed to be and that would cause the motor to go the other way. So this train would come in and pop straight back out again without any pause. It'd be great if we could get a pause in, but obviously that's not possible with this system without getting really complicated with some mind storms or uh, other type uh, equipment. So that's the basis that we're going to use. And on the tram stop that I've already included, which has got Leicester on, which is along the back wall, we don't have one of these pieces. It's just normal track. And the reason for that is because we don't want the tram stopping at that intermediate stop. And the reason for that, as we covered in that video, is because Lego monorail can only really go zigzagging between two positions. And if you create a station in the middle of those two positions, then effectively, once in that side of the track, it will then get stuck in between those two stations. So in order to have it using the full length of the track, you'll need it to be with only two stations, one at each end, and the stops in the middle will just be sort of fake stops where it'll just go straight past, but you know, it'll give the illusion that it will stop there. So that's how the system works. So I've not had to integrate one of these into my tram stops before. Now, I wanted to make all my tram stops look the same, so it was part of a system, just like in real life Nottingham, and as a result, I want to keep as much uh, in common with the one that Lester's on uh, with this one when I make it. And the other thing I want to achieve is I want to incorporate this, which is essentially the play function of the station, into that tram stop as much as possible. I don't want to have a lovely tram stop, say, on this side with a great big lever coming out with a, with a button on it. What I want to do is to have that integrated within the tram stop so you'd barely be able to tell. So first of all I want to make this track a little longer because the tram is if it stops here would be falling off the end so I'm going to add another 16 long piece of tram line and this used to be one of these as well. Uh, you can't get a 16 long piece of monorail track so the only way of getting one is buying one of these stations and taking off the second element which is the switching gear. So there is this slight indentation as you can see on that piece but it doesn't really matter because you'll mainly be seeing it from the top and from the side and the station platform will be hiding one side completely. So I use these printed 1x4 tiles as the 1x4s to join my piece together. So that's the start of our station. Now I thought the best way to incorporate these in a structurally sound way was to sort of shield them with these 6x4 um, sort of fuselage pieces. So if I put one there and another one there, see that's sort of incorporating it already with what will be a platform layer. I'm just going to add another brick in there and you can see that's proud so that'll be the platform level and then we can add in 
two by eight on one side and 16 by eight on the other side to give us the basis of our tram stop. Now, this is old gray and you can see the difference there. It's a bit unsightly to be honest, but it's not really that avoidable unless I do the whole thing in old gray, in which case I'm gonna to have to use a lot of parts, A, that I don't have, and B, there isn't an eight by 16 part in old gray, so I'd have to make it up of loads of different bits. So I think as much as you'd gain, you'd lose. So, uh, and there's gonna be more like bluish gray on this stop very shortly. So I'm just gonna push on with that. These two bits are also light bluish gray, but that is an old gray uh, printed round tile with the arrow on from the original monorail set. So that's the basis. Now to hold this all together, because it's a bit floppy, I'm gonna look at the underside. And I know that I've got to have all of this track for uh, bricks above ground level. So first one, I'm just gonna do a simple stack of four two by two black bricks. Next one, I've made this little setup where it's uh, got a four brick height, but it's also got a few plates just to take off because this, this level is two plates lower than this. So if I just do that, then it's gonna stop that floppiness. And you can see there, we've actually linked the track to the platform in a nice robust way. And this one tile up won't get in the way of uh, the tram as we've proven with the last stop. And we just want one more support underneath the actual switch itself. So this is a very similar setup to the last one. So it's a little different. So we've got one, two, three plates under the switch bit, but only two plates under the fuselage bit, and then three more bricks. So that gives us four there. So there we are, there's our nice, flat, sturdy start to our platform. Now this will actually be, as we just discussed, the end of one of the tram lines and it's going to be um, at the marina. Uh, so we don't want it to go any further than this because this is going to be the point where the tram is going to hit and bounce back going the opposite direction. So we aren't going to need any more of these uh, four long tiles to go on this end because it is the absolute end. But Lego conveniently do some two long ones. So one by two printed tiles. And these are available on bricks and pieces if you want those. Put one of those on each side so it keeps the theme going. And on the very end, I've got a little sort of contraption just to round off that unsightly end. And all this is two headlight bricks with a grill on the top and then a uh, one by four slope, curved slope with two one by one plates on it, like that. And again, this is light bluish gray, yes, but can't get those parts in old gray, but that's about as good as we can do. So that's nice and smart. So then we just need to think about our tram stop building. So as I said, I'm gonna do this the same as the one we've already done. And I do have one more of these uh, stickers left that I used on the other one as well, just a sort of generic advertising. They're from the 8404 public transport station set from 2010. And I'm just using those in place of a normal one by six white brick, but this is the direction that we're gonna be viewing it from because uh, this is the area which I'll be standing and filming from usually and the, the wall being over there. So that's a good place to put that brick. And I'm just gonna continue the theme that I had before. So we've got this band of light bluish gray and then a band of orange. And on the other side, I'm gonna have a set of stairs. So I'll just put the top stair there. And that, so we've got this one wide level, and then I've got the stop itself. Now this stop is loosely based and, and uses the stickers from the uh, City Square set, that's 60097 from 2015. And the stickers from that set are the ticket machine stickers here, and the ticket sign, and this 
station clock, which are very useful. And fortunately that set had a double-sided stop in the originals. So basically you get two of these stickers and two of those stickers and two of those stickers in one set. And I bought that set, but I also then bought another sticker sheet from Bricklink, uh, which enables me to make four stops. So we've done one dummy stop with Lester on it, this one, and we'll be able to do two more in the other half of the Lego room in the future. So that's very good. And then just to finish it off, we did the top of the stairs. I've just made in the same style as before, another set of stairs, just using inverted slopes and one by two slopes. And that'll fit on like that. This end will integrate seamlessly with uh, the pavement or sidewalk near the park. And it's exactly the same style as the one we used before, except that was an elevated one. So rather than being four bricks above ground level, it was 14 bricks above uh, ground level. So it actually had a, a turn and, and was a lot longer. But there is our basic stop. So we can then integrate this with our tram line and get that tram going. Fantastic. Actually, while we're here, I think we should add a few pedestrians and a few details. So as with the other stop, I've got a pair of blue seats just for passengers to use. And let's put some people on. So I've just got a generic boy with a nice spaceman t-shirt. Put him on. Maybe he's with his dad with his cool bomber jacket. And then for a bit of fun and a nice scene, I thought I'd add the uh, clumsy guy from the season 15 minifigures range. And where better to put him than at the top of the stairs, just about to have another accident and unfortunately fall down the full flight of stairs. So given we're gonna see it from this angle, I think that's quite a good view. Now, some people probably won't like the fact that this play feature is very visible. I think um, play features in Lego should be seen because it is Lego after all and not real life. Some people like the style of doing things so it looks absolutely like a photograph and that's great as well. But for me, play features are part of Lego. And although this is sort of a bollard for him to avoid and sort of skirt around, I think we have to imagine it's not there, just like we don't imagine that all the cranes have got winding handles on them. So um, I think it's the same as that. And I think, largely speaking, it's integrated fully with the platform. Right, let's go and put that in the Lego room. And here it is put in the Lego room. Got this lovely long straight with the slope down coming into this station with the track disappearing round the corner behind the town hall at the other end. Can't wait to get a tram going on all this. It'll look absolutely fantastic. You can also see the nice printed tiles we've got and that curved end piece because this is the end of the line for this part of the tram system. And I think we've done a good job of incorporating the mechanics of this uh, switch here in that it, it doesn't look that unsightly to me. I mean, it looks like it's blending in. Also got the good city sticker there, the clear windows at the back, which uh, allow us to sort of see through this structure. I did have a thought of perhaps including um, some of these, especially this one, Mystery on the Monorail, um, advertising hoardings for films, which come with the one of the cinema sets uh, in place of these glass pieces. And the good thing about them is they are two-sided, so you'd see it from either side. But I thought it's quite good to be able to see through it, I think. So you can see that there are people waiting at the tram stop if you're looking from this direction, and you can see um, what will be quite an open area here uh, from the other direction. So I'll save those and use them in advertising hoardings elsewhere. Now I do have to 
tile at the bottom of the steps. So those steps we made are starting here and going all the way down. I do have to tile that area uh, to integrate it fully. And at the bottom of the steps is that flower bed and uh, white wall of the park. Now also don't be disturbed by the fact that this is a bit of bare table. This will have a base plate on it, but at the moment the area where the camera tripod is standing is actually where a table will be in the future. And that table will support the two bridges, two railway bridges, which will be the continuation of these two train lines over here. And they'll be going over the mouth of Brick Bay, which is the area of water that is represented by the sort of hole in between the tables that I stand in. So Brick Bay will have the marina, which is obviously over here behind the bus on one side and facing that on the other long side of that sort of hatch hole, so to speak, will be my beach. So if that's representing a body of water, then where we stand in these bridges is the opening of that bay into the greater sea area and the harbour, which is over there. So it all makes sense. Right, I'm going to tile this area uh, and then we'll have a look at the station from a different angle. Here it is from the back. As you can see, there's the clumsy guy falling down those stairs. That's really going to hurt, isn't it? Then we've got a dog show winner with his nice white dog walking on the new pavement or sidewalk. And I've even made a blind man with a white stick who's sadly walking straight towards the edge of the quayside where there's quite a drop. So that's very unfortunate. Hopefully you guys on the tour bus will be able to stop him. And speaking of the tour bus, there's actually a few new members of the tour bus that represents all of you around the world. We have a Spanish lady, which is the flamenco lady, but with the dress piece removed. We have an Australian, and there isn't an official Australian minifigure, but you've requested one, and the people that made the most comments requested this guy. Hopefully that's not too insulting to anyone. <laughs> he's got his cowboy hat, he's got his beer, he's forgotten his camera, perhaps. So uh, maybe he's a, a cattle rancher from Australia. And then I had a few requests for a Dutch person. And there isn't an official Dutch person, so I just went for all orange being their national colour, including the hair. So orange legs, orange hoodie torso, and this orange hair from a Ninjago uh, film minifigure. So those are the three new people. Now the top deck is completely rammed now, so uh, I think any more will have to either go on the bottom deck or be pushed uh, push others down onto the bottom deck. Anyway, all good. Oh, and while I'm here, there's also now a uh, bucket and spade in the sand pit. That was another thing suggested by a viewer. Great. Well, I really want to get on with putting the tram itself in and getting it running, but I just don't think we've got time today, so I'm going to call it a day there. Still good progress, and um, we need this station in order to have the tram running, so it uh, makes sense to do this first. So thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time we will be putting the tram in and watching it go. With tram cam as well, hopefully. See you next time!